the concert, uh, concentration of the constituents on the clean side here, yeah, uh, of the membrane. Okay, so this is uh, osmosis. Huh? So you need to understand osmosis. Uh, osmosis actually from the fresh water to the dirty water, but finally they will uh, they will stop when the process is in equilibrium. Okay, so this is a natural movement of water. Eh? Okay, okay. So this is uh, osmotic pressure. Eh? The osmotic pressure. What is osmotic pressure? It is actually the pressure created eh, by the difference in concent uh, by the difference in concentration of the constituents on either side of the membrane eh? so this is osmotic pressure and this pressure drives the uh, uh, osmosis process yeah so the osmotic pressure actually drives the flow of the fresh water to the dirty side uh, this is osmotic pressure so as the concentration of the uh, constituents on each side of the membrane uh, reach equilibrium uh, where this uh, concentration meaning when you say that it, it it reaches equilibrium actually the concentration is the same eh, on both sides of the membrane here so the osmotic pressure becomes zero and the flow stops yeah so when the concentration become in equilibrium the flow stop uh, because the concentrations are the same. There's no more osmotic pressure. Eh? Okay, so osmosis is not desirable for uh, from a water treatment standpoint eh? because what you want to do, your goal of water treatment is to produce fresh water. Okay, and not to dilute the tea water with fresh water. This is osmotic uh, Osmotic principle, meaning that you dilute the dirty water by the fresh water here due to this osmotic pressure, and when they become equilibrium, they stop. Eh? But this is not what you want eh, for any uh, water treatment. Okay, so this comes. Okay, this is the uh, osmotic pressure, water flow. So what you want for your system, for your membrane, is actually reverse osmosis, not osmosis. Eh? You remember, you remember in your mind that osmosis is the dilution of the dirty water eh, by the fresh water. So this is osmosis, but you don't want osmosis. In water treatment, you want to have reverse osmosis. Eh? So what is reverse osmosis? Actually, it is the process of uh, forcing uh, water from the dirty side through the membrane uh into the clean water side okay so uh, actually this is uh, uh the 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 direction is not from the fresh water to the dirty water eh? but for reverse osmosis is from dirty water to fresh water so the dirty water will become more concentrated eh? okay so uh uh, this uh, process will leave all undesirable constituents behind on the membrane itself. Eh? So here, uh, okay, by operating the system uh, opposite to its normal, uh, uh, we call it normal direction, is when uh, osmosis, eh? osmosis is normal direction, but you want to operate the system opposite to the normal uh, direction. So fresh water can be produced from the raw water. Eh? So undesirable constituents here uh, will be deposited eh, on the membrane surface here and will eventually clog it. Eh? So uh, when you have already uh, filtered uh, uh, some amount of water, so the membrane will be clogged. Eh? So if a membrane system is to be useful, there must be a way to remove this material from the membrane itself, as well as from the entire system. So you need to backwash the membrane and also remove whatever the clog that you have here out of the membrane system. Eh? So this is the principle of membrane. Okay. And okay, now we talk about uh, purely on the reverse osmosis again. Okay, uh, reverse osmosis actually occurs when a force is applied to the side concentrated with the solute. In this case, salt. 
Uh, this is when you talk about desalination, meaning that you want to remove salt, eh? uh, causing solvent water to less concentrated side of the permeable membrane, thus uh, producing fresh water. Eh? So uh, once again, uh, this is very clear. Uh, this is about uh, reverse osmosis. We are talking about water treatment, but uh, very important water treatment is desalination, especially in the uh, arid region where you uh, take the uh, where you take the fresh uh, water from the sea, eh? because uh, uh, they don't have uh, they don't have lots of uh, rain, so. Uh, they use uh, seawater, eh? so this is desalination. So this is why reverse osmosis. Eh? Osmosis, equilibrium, and reverse osmosis. Okay, so now you understand what is membrane principles. Eh? So uh, again, okay, comparison of membrane filtration levels. Yeah, so you have. Uh, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, and nanofiltration. Eh? So uh, this uh, uh, level are based on uh, size, uh, uh, size of uh, range of the pores. Eh? So microfiltration is 0 0.05 to 1 micrometer. Ultrafiltration is smaller up to 0 0.005 micrometer. And nanofiltration is the smallest, 0 0.0005 micrometer. So what are the target contaminants? Eh? So the membrane filtration levels, uh, when you decide um, based on the characteristics of the water source that you have, then you will determine the target contaminants. So the uh, membrane filtration uh, is a very uh, important process especially for industries eh? usually industries is uh, they have uh, they are located in the area where the the land uh, price is very expensive so they need to have small system eh? so uh, finally they want to make sure that they have the uh, quality that they need so they use this membrane filtration so the target contaminants for the microfiltration is particulate material like algae, jadia, cryptobacteria, and clays. Eh? Ultrafiltration, all substances removed by microfilters plus humic acids and some viruses. While nanofiltration, all substances removed by microfilter and ultrafilters plus dissolved metals and salts. Eh? So nanofiltration, they also uh, remove dissolved metals and salts. Eh? Okay, so you can see here a uh, process to remove different types of contaminants. So here, uh, salts, uh, uh, actually uh, ion is removed by reverse osmosis, eh? but nanofiltration removes salts. Metal ions are removed by uh, reverse osmosis. Okay, so you have this ultrafiltration, micro, sand filtration, and then you have micro, and then you have ultra, nano, and reverse osmosis. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, the schematic diagram of the membrane where the, you have the feed here, influent to the membrane medu, uh, module, the feed water or feed stream. This is the semi-permeable membrane. So liquid that passes through the semi-permeable membranes, uh, you call them permeate product stream, permeating stream, and these are the products. Eh? Products, uh, these are the term used when you uh, read maybe somewhere else, they, they will have different uh, term eh? used to uh, um, to this describe the products that you have from the membrane system. And then the concentrate, liquid containing the retained constituents. Okay, so you also have uh, a few terms that are being used. Concentrate, retentate, reject, retained phase, and also the waste stream. So these are the concentrate, okay? Okay, this, uh, this is the photo of the concentrate recycle operation with product backwash, eh? So this is the 
And then you can see uh, when you uh, visit any treatment plant or you visit an industry, uh, you always uh, uh, see this uh, type of uh, membrane. Eh? Uh, this is the uh, one, the one used in industry. Eh? So there are many types of membranes uh, based on the pore size and mechanism of functioning. Uh, just now, uh, once again, uh, I will explain that membranes can be uh, divided into four groups. Eh? Uh, actually, uh, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and reverse osmosis. Okay. So, what is microfiltration? Just now you have already looked at the pore size uh, used for water treatment plant with less than 12 million gallon per day and low raw water turbidity. Eh, low raw water turbidity. If the water is very turbid, then you need to have a series of uh, filtration types. Maybe you can have sand filtration first and then uh, you go to microfiltration. Eh? And then you may you can uh, maybe after microfiltration you have uh, ultrafiltration. Eh? So uh, microfiltration uh, is uh, membranes function like a sieve. Eh? Uh, so the pore size uh, you see uh, range from 0 0.1 to 1 micrometer. Therefore, they remove all uh, particles eh, bigger than 1 micrometer, including this, uh, this one uh, here, Christoperidium osis, cardiasis, and all bacteria. Eh? So actually, they are successfully used for water treatment plants. Uh, so this is the limit, eh? 12 million gallon per day capacity. And you need to make sure that you have low raw water turbidity. Okay, if you have high turbidity, then you need to think of something else eh? before you uh, undergo the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the water source to this uh, uh, filtration unit. Eh? And then you have ultrafiltration. Uh, ultrafiltration membranes, uh, actually, they are similar to microfiltration, uh, except that the pore size is uh, sometimes they say 0 0.005, sometimes 0 0.3 to 1 micrometer eh, to remove very small particles. Eh? So they will remove all the uh, particles uh, bigger than this pore size including viruses and uh, total halomethane eh, formation precursors. Eh? So these are the um, contaminants, new contaminants that are uh, tetrahalomethane. Eh? Um, uh, this is due to the reaction when you have chlorination. Eh? So this is uh, uh, last week we learned about THM eh? um, uh, formation of due to uh, chlor chlorination byproducts. Eh? So sometimes if you have uh, uh, you notice that you have THM after the chlorination, then you need to have ultrafiltration eh? to make sure that the water is of highest uh, quality. Eh? So uh, so. Uh, uh, you, uh, you see the advantages of ultrafiltration is no need for chemicals, meaning that you don't need to have uh, coagulants, flocculants, disinfectant. Eh? So constant quality of the treated water in terms of particles and microorganisms, process and plant compactness and simple automation. Eh? But this ultrafiltration, since this is a physical process, it will not change the chemistry of water. Yeah. So, uh, example, when you obtain potable water from surface water, but they contain algae and bacteria, so you can pre-treat eh, before reverse osmosis. Uh, let's say if you want to do, uh, use it for drinking water, then uh, you have to uh, have a reverse osmosis uh, treatment. Eh? So you need to pre-treat with ultrafiltration because you can see that uh, High energy is needed for each type. The smaller the pore size, you need higher energy for the membrane. Eh? So that's why uh, you will use the uh, pre-treatment, the ultrafiltration, and then you uh, decide uh, to have a reverse osmosis in series. Eh? Okay. And then this is uh, uh, nanofiltration. Eh? Uh, so nanofiltration, 
you see the pore size is 0 0.01 to 1 nanometer pore size. Remove all the particles above nanometer size. Besides removing viruses and bacteria, they remove some dissolved substances. Because uh, nanofiltration membranes also remove alkalinity, the product water can be corrosive and measures such as blending raw water and product water or adding uh, alkalinity may be needed to reduce corrosivity. Eh? You learn um, last two weeks eh, about water. If they don't have any alkalinity, they become very corrosive eh, when you learn about uh, water hardness. Eh? So actually, it's good to remove the water hardness, but still you need to maintain some hardness. Eh? That's why when you do the chemical precipitation for softening of the water, actually, uh, you will still have some hardness in the water because it is important that uh, the water cannot be very, very soft eh? because they will be corrosive. Okay. Nanofiltration also uh, remove hardness from water. Hard water treater will need to be pretreated uh, uh, with this <coughs> nanofiltration. Maybe uh, you uh, because uh, you 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 will need a lot of energy for nanofiltration. Then maybe you have to use macrofiltration and then ultrafiltration and nanofiltration, eh? depending on the turbidity of your uh, water. Eh? Okay. Uh, what time is it now? Actually, I left my phone at home. Okay, uh, so this is the osmosis, reverse osmosis. And okay, and this is the applied pressure. Uh, this is again uh, for you to uh, really understand what is osmosis and reverse osmosis. Eh? So uh, this is the... Uh, uh, saline feed water. If you use it for desalination, this is the pretreatment stage, and then you have high pressure pump for the uh, membrane yeah? uh, for you to have the pressure uh, uh, against the osmotic pressure. Yeah? So this is the re uh, reject stage one, and then you have another. Uh, energy recovery device, you have reject stage 2, you have booster pump, and then you have another uh, membrane types, eh? and then post-treatment stage, and then you have the fresh water, okay? So you can have a few types of membrane in series, eh? okay? Okay, this is again uh, to show you uh, let's say you have seawater intake and then you have screens, pump station, pretreatment with filtration. Uh, you have, uh, you can add coagulant and flocculant and then you do the desalination using reverse osmosis. Eh? And then you will get your drinking water supply. Okay. Okay, this is uh, again. And then, okay, uh, this is also uh, for you to, uh, for you to compare the conventional process where you have the pre-chlorination and then you have to add coagulant, then you have the flocculation tank, then you have to have clarification, send uh, a filtration, and then if you have high uh, amount of chlorine, then you do need to do post-chlorination until you get your treated water. Eh? But if you use membrane, uh, membrane system, eh? You uh, precipitate, uh, precipitate addition for dissolved contaminants only, and then you will uh, you will be able to remove viruses, bacteria, turbidity, and color removal with membrane in a single step. Okay, and then you have this post chlorination. Okay, um, you can see that there are a few uh, unit operations that can be discarded. Eh? Uh, from your uh, uh, water treatment plant eh, by uh, replacing with membrane, okay? Okay, and uh, reverse osmosis, eh? uh, actually the, when you talk about membrane, it's reverse osmosis, but when you, uh, you say about the types of membrane, reverse osmosis meaning uh, is a different meaning, meaning that uh, reverse uh, osmosis membranes, they are still uh, semi-permeable, um uh okay so uh, they need pressure higher than the osmotic pressure applied on the higher concentration side 
Okay, they remove substances like sodium, calcium, magnesium and other metal compounds. Yeah? So reverse osmosis in the types of membrane, meaning that this is after nanofiltration. Because nanofiltration, you can still have uh, ion like sodium, calcium, magnesium and other metal compounds. So they remove everything, yeah? reverse osmosis. So uh, they can treat seawater that has a total dissolved solid. Uh, seawater usually have 35,000 milligram per liter of uh, ion and other brackish water up to 30,000 milligram per liter. Eh? So uh, the advantage of uh, using this uh, reverse osmosis is that you remove nearly all contaminant ions and most dissolved non-ions. Eh? And uh, low effluent concentration possible, bacteria and particles are also removed, operational simplicity and automation. Limited uh, limitation eh, of this reverse osmosis is high capital and operating cost. Eh? So you manage the wastewater is a potential problem. High level of pretreatment is required in some cases. Membranes are prone to fouling eh, because they remove, especially, especially if you don't have, if you don't pre-treat eh, before you go to the reverse osmosis stage. Eh. Producers the most wastewater at between 25 to uh, 50 percent. Okay. Okay. Uh, sometimes you, uh, have you ever heard that uh, reverse osmosis water is not good? Have you ever heard of this? Because people say that re reverse osmosis water, when you buy your uh, drinking water, <coughs> RO water, some people say that uh, reverse osmosis water is not good because they remove all the minerals and they will not be in your drinking water. Eh? Actually, reverse osmosis remove everything, uh, uh, especially the uh, toxic one like the chloride and too much of fluoride, they will remove every, everything. But the minerals that they contain, maybe it's not in the water, but actually you are taking more minerals when you eat your food. Eh? So yes, through reverse osmosis, remove everything, but actually the minerals that you obtain for your body usually are from food. Eh? Okay, okay. some uh, reverse osmosis process after the water is treated using this, they also input uh, some a trace amount of uh, ion that you need for your body. Yeah. Okay. okay. This is a remote reverse osmosis membrane element inside a pressure vessel. Okay. What time is it now? Eh? What time is it? Students, what time is it? 9.30. Huh? 8.30? 9.38. 9.38, okay, okay. Okay, I, I can finish by 9. Okay, uh, okay, so this is reverse osmosis membrane element inside a pressure vessel. Okay, so this is actually uh, you always buy, eh? you always buy the membrane treatment unit. Okay, so electrodialysis, you always also, uh, 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 you always uh, uh, hear about this uh, electrodialysis. So electrodialysis, they use direct electric current to separate dissolved electrolytes from the water. Eh? So anions are collected at the anode and cations at the cathode. Eh? So electrodialysis, they are not membrane, but they are separating the uh, ne uh, negative uh, and ions and cations. They are not pressure driven because membrane are pressure driven, but electrodialysis are not pressure driven. Eh? ED accounts for 3.6% of the global desalination uh, capacity. Eh? Okay. Uh, so actually, this electrodialysis, they use direct, eh? direct electric current to separate dissolved electrolytes. Uh, from the water. Eh? So anions are uh, collected at the anode and cations at the cathode. Eh? Okay, so th they are not membrane, but uh, 
since they separate eh, anions and cations, you need to know that there also exists electrodialysis where they separate using uh, electric current. Eh? Okay, so a series of ionic and anionic membranes are lined up between two electrodes and a low DC voltage is applied, eh, uh, causing the ions in the brackish water to migrate to the electrodes. Yeah, actually, they are suitable for total dissolved of solid uh, up to 12,000 milligram per liter, meaning that if you have... Um, if you have higher concentration of dissolved solids, like what you have in most of uh, seawater, then membrane is the best to use. Eh? So actually energy consumption uh, is around 1.5 to 4 kilowatt hour per cubic meter for feed water of 15,000 to 35,000 ppm solid. Eh? So meaning that uh, you cannot have electrodialysis for most of the desalination water uh, uh, near. That's why uh, you have a membrane a reverse osmosis process that is um, uh, mostly used. Eh? Okay. So this is still uh, one uh, a comparison eh, of the electrodialysis, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and reverse osmosis. Eh? So you can see that electrodialysis, what they can return, retain water, TSS, microbes, uncharged molecules eh, because they only separate the, and not, uh, the anions and cations eh, due to electric current. So they will not remove all this. Okay, So meaning that uh, uh, electrodialysis cannot be the only treatment eh, for removing everything. Eh. Transported dissolved salts. Uh, they only transport dissolved salts because they have uh, an ion and cations. Microfiltration, larger particles. They transport dissolved salts and small particles. Ultrafiltration, larger molecules, and they transport small molecules and ions. Eh? Nanofiltration, higher charge ions, and they only transport monovalent ions, small molecules. Reverse osmosis retain almost everything. Eh? Very small uncharged molecules because the charged molecules, the, uh, uh, the uh, ion of metals, they also retain. Eh? So meaning that if you want to have a very, very clean water, you need to uh, use reverse osmosis. Eh? So the membrane materials can be from synthetic polymer, from ceramic and from metallic. Eh? Almost uh, metally, almost all membranes manufactured for drinking water are made of uh, polymeric materials since they are significantly less expensive than membranes constructed and other uh, materials. Yeah? So filtration modes. These are three common uh, uh, filtration modes. Yeah? So this is what we call dead end flow. Eh? So when you want to buy membrane, so when the manufacturer describes to you the types of membrane that you want to use, then you need to understand all these terms. Eh? Meaning that you need to understand how it is operated. So you can, uh, for your water treatment plant, you can find a, a membrane uh, from the manufacturer, you just uh, assume that you want to buy from this manufacturer, but you need to explain to uh, explain in the report what uh, what is the membrane type that you use, what is the capacity, what is the filtration modes, eh? and then uh, uh, by uh, looking at this. Slides, you will be able to tell uh, what are the types of uh, membrane that are being manufactured by the company that you want to um, uh, acquire or uh, buy your membrane from. Eh? Okay, so this is the, the first one is dead end flow. Eh? Dead end flow. Here, yeah, dead end flow. Uh, all water passes uh, through the membrane. Particles are trapped within the membrane structure. Dead end flow meaning that you have to clean whatever because the uh, the, the 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 particles they are entrapped eh, in this uh, membrane. Eh? So these are the uh, the uh, water passes. Eh? Meaning that 
the, when you talk about filtration mode, actually you are describing the contaminants eh, that end flow, meaning that all water passes through the membrane, but part particles are trapped within the membrane structure. So this is that end flow. Cross flow, cross flow, feed water passes parallel to the membrane surface, a uh, product water permeates through the membrane. The concentrated stream uh, helps carry particles out of the system. This is cross flow. Again, you are describing the uh, contaminants or the concentrate, yeah, the cross flow. And then transverse flow, uh, this, this is the third type, uh, the third filtration mode. Transverse flow, feed water meets the membrane surface at right angles product water permeates through to the inside of the tube, concentrate washes over the outside of the tube, removing a particle uh, below. Eh? Okay, so this is the transverse flow of the contaminants. Eh? Okay, this is the membrane configurations. Uh, uh, this is depth filter. You have Spiral wound configuration. This, this is how it looks like, and this is plate and frame uh, configuration. Yeah? And then you have also you have pleated membrane uh, cartridge, and you have tubular or hollow fiber module. Yeah? So this is the common one being used: tubular or hollow fiber module. Yeah? But you can have a different configuration. Okay. So uh, uh, when you look at the types of membrane, then you uh, need to explain what are the types of uh, uh, membrane that you use. And, okay. So when you want to select the uh, uh, the right membrane filter, selection of the right membrane filter, because usually it is uh, um, you buy from the manufacturers. Eh? So uh, of course, eh, when you talk about uh, selecting membrane filter, actually the economic factors and the specific needs uh, are the two major co uh, considerations you, for you to select the filter. So the fact that uh, reverse osmosis, uh, uh, reverse osmosis, if you want to choose reverse osmosis filter, they will remove all the target contaminants. Eh? Uh, uh, they will back to the question of why you uh, need a larger pore uh, size a filter would be used. Eh? Of course, uh, the best when you talk about the type of uh, membrane, you know that uh, reverse osmosis will remove everything. So, but this, uh, the answer to this uh, question is that but it is very simple. You know that it is simple economics. Yeah? So uh, even though you know that reverse osmosis filtration system uh, will remove many substances yeah, from the water, but they are much more uh, expensive yeah, to build and to operate yeah, compared to microfiltration uh, facility. Yeah? So since a microfilter has much larger pores, so the system can operate um, compared to uh, uh, they can they can operate at much higher flow rates and much lower feed pressures. Eh? So this why you need a uh, uh, microfiltration. Eh? More flows and less feed pressure mean smaller facilities that use less energy to produce each gallon of water. Eh? So you can compare this micro filtration and also the remove uh, reverse osmosis uh, pressure here okay okay you can see here microfiltration 15 to 40 psi reverse osmosis 800 to 1000 uh, psi yeah. so the specific needs of the facility and its product you must consider yeah, before you select a level of filtration yeah. And uh, in order for you to select the proper level of filtration, uh, you the first one, uh, you must identify the contaminants in the source water and your desired level of uh, treatment. OK, let's say if it is used for drinking water or it is you want to use it for boiler or you want to use it for something else, you know that uh, the level is uh, you need a very high quality water. But uh, let's say if you want to use it for irrigation or you just want to discharge to another river, then you don't need to have that very high quality. Eh? Uh, let's say uh, when you have uh, 
uh, let's say from the water source, you uh, they, they contains uh, moderate levels of jadia and cristoporidium eh, uh, that you see here just now. Uh, we talk about it. Um, you can see that you only need microfiltration system. No need for you to go up to reverse osmosis. Eh? Uh, okay, so if the uh, only available source water contain high level of salts, then you know that nanofilter or reverse osmosis system you um, need to be used. Eh? Okay, uh, so another aspect that you need to uh, consider eh, when you discuss the different levels of filtration is the pressure required here. Okay, uh, 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 this is very uh, uh, important. Uh, okay, so the smallest pore size reverse osmosis, you can see here that they require very high pressure. So it is very uh, uh, critical for you to determine the contaminants that you want to remove, the level that you want to achieve for your treated water, then only you choose the type of membrane system that you want to use. Eh? So uh, another thing that we need to consider is about membrane fouling. Eh? Uh, what is membrane fouling? Actually, is it is the clogging of uh, membrane by the filtered uh, out matter, which forms a layer called cake on the membrane surface. Yeah. So the degree of fouling depends on the quantity of particulate matter in the feed and the level of its removal. Okay, so fouling of the membrane uh, surface during operation will diminish eh, the productivity of the membrane. And in the case of a continued fouling condition, uh, you will uh, experience uh, source rejection, eh? meaning that if you don't clean uh, the, the, the contaminants here, the fouling, then uh, uh, they will reject uh, whatever you uh, want your source water to go through this uh, filtration system. Eh? Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> fouling stems from particles in the feed water build up of uh, sparsely uh, uh, soluble minerals and the byproducts of microorganisms growth. Eh? So, all of these uh, conditions require frequent cleaning, uh, uh, which is expensive and, uh, of course, it leads to shorter service life of your membrane elements. Eh? Okay, so especially when more than one fouling condition prevails, so the membrane can be irreversibly fouled. Eh? Uh, so, uh, uh, the correction of the conditions and the replacement of the membrane uh, is the only solution. Eh? Uh, sometimes you need to replace the membrane. Eh? So uh, actually, in general, the feed to membrane should not contain suspended solids and adequate pretreatment of the feeds is mandatory eh? to a well-functioning uh, membrane plant. Eh? Uh, the most common eh? uh, soluble minerals include silica, barium and contributors to hardness, eh? meaning that if you have, uh, uh, if your water is hard, then you have to soften the water first. first eh? Or the growth of uh, microorganisms is also an uh, important problem, especially when you are operating the membrane at, uh, like in Malaysia, uh, 30 to 45 degrees Celsius, which is very good for uh, growth of microorganisms. Eh? Okay. Um, actually, there is only one way eh, uh, to avoid membrane fouling uh, is to ensure uh, adequate pretreatment of your feed eh, and you operate the membrane filtration equipment using parameters that do not produce fouling, meaning that you have to be very careful looking at the uh, uh, contaminants that you have and then you choose the series of filtration. Eh? So uh, last, uh, the last uh, treatment unit would be the membrane. Okay, then maybe you need to use the uh, uh, carbon activated filtration. Of course, sand filtration is the first, and then finally uh, you have the membrane. Eh? 
uh, pre-treatment needs to be designed to remove suspended solids in the feed. Eh? Uh, normal combination of uh, sand filters and depth filters. Eh? Okay. The uh, actually two common types of uh, filter problems. Uh, those occurs uh, by filter runs that are too long, eh? Because you have infrequent backwash, and those caused by inefficient backwash. Eh? Either the, the the filter problems will be due to the filter that are too long because you uh, uh, backwash very uh, infrequent eh? and then inefficient backwash cleaning. Eh? Uh, so because uh, a filter run that too long can cause breakthrough. Eh? Uh, you remember last week about when we uh, uh, learn about uh, cleaning and also uh, absorption, we learn about uh, breakthrough, eh? uh, the pushing of debris removed from the water through the media and into the effluent and also air binding. Eh? This is also the problem, the trapping of air and other dissolved gases in the filter media. Eh? And air binding occurs when the rate of water exits uh, the bottom of the filter exits eh? the inside uh, in the filter media. Okay. So these are the common filter problems that you will experience with uh, membrane filtration. Okay, I think that's all for membrane uh, topic that I want to introduce to you. And I hope that uh, by having this uh, some knowledge of this membrane, you will be able to choose a membrane if you need for your water treatment uh, and design. Okay, any question from you students? Any questions? Any questions, students? No. No, okay. So it's nearly nine, right? Okay. Uh, okay, if you don't have any question, uh, we will have one more class next week. It's about uh, uh, bio, uh, no, no, uh, it's about a uh, biological system for polishing of your uh, water source. Eh? Okay, uh, treated water, polishing of your treated water. Okay, that one. And then uh, I hope that you are uh, almost ready with your design of your water treatment plan because you have learned about uh, almost all the important units that you need for you to clean the whatever source water that you have that you have uh, chosen and you have selected for your uh, project design. Okay. If anything, you can ask me in the group. Okay. See you again next week. Okay. Assalamualaikum and good day. Take care. Thank you, sir. Okay. Welcome. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Welcome.